So in the last video we left off adding this functionality to our API, we were able to query the API and it would return a list of all of the relevant posts from the database in the form of JSON. In this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to the actual index page itself and whenever somebody types into the search box we're going to send a query to our API that's going to send back some JSON and we're going to extract important information from the JSON and display it on our homepage. So the first thing we need to do is we need to design the box that's going to appear underneath the search box as we type. So I have the design here on Bootstrap Studio and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a list group. So there's our list group and if I preview it you can see there's the list group there but you can see it pushed that out of the way so we're going to fix that. So to fix that I'm going to click on the list group, I'm going to drag this up so we can see the styles, click on list group and I'm going to set position absolute and I'm going to give it a width of 100%. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export that. So our design's just been exported and here is our exported page in our text editor. So I'm going to scroll down and here's our list group so I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go back to our index page, our actual one that is stored with our project and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to scroll down again and I'm going to paste it in here. So if I refresh now, you can see there's our list group. If I resize the window, you can see we still have our list group because we pasted it in twice, once for the mobile version and once for the desktop version. So the next thing we have to do is we need to run a function every time someone types into that search box. So to do that I'm going to target the search box, I'm going to add the sbox class to our search box. We're going to scroll up and we're going to add that same class to the mobile search box as well. Now we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and after the document.ready function runs, which means the page is ready to go, we're going to add a jQuery selector for the sbox class and then we're going to run the function called key up. Whenever the user presses a key, whenever they lift their finger off the key, this function will run. So if I just run a function when that happens, and inside the function what we're going to do is we're going to send an Ajax request to our API. So you can see we already have one here, so we're just going to copy this one, paste it in here, and instead of going to API posts, we're going to go to API slash search, question mark, search equals, and here we're going to pass in whatever the user are typed into the search box which in this case we do that by saying this keyword to the selector and then we say this dot val. So on success we're going to run another function otherwise we're going to say error function and we're just going to console.log the r variable. So on success we're going to alert the response and before we run this we just want to change that to query because that's the keyword we actually use and now if I type something in the letter H, you can see we get all of our JSON printed back because all of these posts have a H in them. And if we just go back to our API and we scroll down, you can see we're also printing out a pre tag. So we're just going to delete that. So back on our index page, we're going to say R is equal to JSON.parse the R variable because R at the moment is just a string. So by doing this, we're converting it into a JavaScript object. Then what we're going to do is loop through all the objects that are returned. We're going to set for var i equals zero. I is less than R.length i plus plus and then we're going to console.log r. This will just log lots of javascript objects uh, and we're actually printing out r so we just want to do r i to access an individual object. Type in the letter c you can see now we get the javascript object returned. We only want to access the body element so we can just console.log r i body. So we're almost done but before we're finished what we have to do is scroll up to our list group we want to delete all of these except one and we're going to give our list group an id of autocomplete we're going to copy that give the other list group an id of autocomplete and delete everything in it the only reason we're keeping one is so that we know the format of a list group item. So we're going to cut that scroll all the way down to the bottom and what we want to do in our loop is append items into our list group so to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to target the list group with the hashtag autocomplete selector and i'm going to say dot html and the way we do that is we just inside this function, we pass this function itself. So we do autocomplete.html. And then what we do is we append on the rest of our string. So in this case, it's going to be the div that we want to append in. Just like this. And we change the list group item from list group item one to whatever we want. In this case, we're going to say the body of our post. And before that'll work, we actually need to change this. So instead of targeting the ID attribute, we're targeting the class attribute because, because IDs can only apply to one object on the HTML page. So if we scroll up, we change it from ID equals autocomplete to just class autocomplete. Scroll up again and just replace the other one. Type in the letter C. Now you can see all of our auto-completed suggestions come up, but if I type in again, you can see they're not actually disappearing. So to fix that, all we have to do is scroll down to the bottom of our page, and the first time we run our function, we're just going to copy this. Before we actually run the Ajax function, we're just going to paste it in here and change it to empty. So in other words, 
we're going to set the HTML, which is the inside content of the autocomplete element to empty. So if we refresh, type something, I could say hello. You can see all of these list items of the word hello in them. If I type in world, you can see that it's anything with the word hello world in them. And if we wanted to, we could make that a link. If we wanted to, we could include more information. We could include who posted it. We could include the date that it was posted. Because looking at our JSON, you can see we have the username and the posted at already included in the JSON. So it's already being sent to us. We're just ignoring it currently. And you can see if I shrink the window and type something, it works as you would expect. We have these tiny buttons in front of our list item. And we can fix that really easily. We can just right click on our list group, go over here and in the autocomplete class, what I could do is I could just increase the Z index to a thousand or a hundred would do or a hundred or a thousand, any number that's bigger than whatever's behind it. And now you can see they've just disappeared. So before we go, we can just do that. We can say Z index 100, scroll up again, Z index 100. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. If you have any questions, don't forget to email me at francis at But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.